Welcome to the darkness that fills my mind. It's the time of year where we thrive on all manner of lurid and morbid tales. Where things go bump in the night and the scariest monsters are the ones that lurk within our souls. (laughs) October is here. Welcome, fiends, to our first October Madness episode, The Curse of Black Death. The whole month of October, I'll be bringing you all manner of things related to the plague. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube to keep up to date. And if you enjoy Beauty Unlocked, consider becoming a patron. For $3 a month, you'll gain access to different goodies. Check us out on patreon.com forward slash beauty unlocked and leave some coin on the dresser. Without further ado, let's delve into the plague ridden world of the 14th century. Listener's discretion is advised. So before we get into all the gore and the morbidity of the plague, I wanted to get through all the facts, right? Because I've been researching the plague since July. (laughs) So I'm going to take you through the wonderful factual world of the plague before anything else. Are you ready? I think I did hear a few sighs and, oh my God, why do we have to go through this? I didn't sign up for this, Carissa. Yes, I know. We're going to get to the really nasty bits soon enough. (laughs) But we first have to know a few facts about it, right? Consider it part of my public service because the next time you're at a cocktail party, you'll have something to discuss, right? The plague. You welcome. And whilst you're socializing at this cocktail party, I hope you'll be applying social distancing measures. Alrighty then. The word plague was coined by the physician Galen, and it defines a lethal epidemic. Now, European writers described the disease in Latin as pestis, or pestilentia, epidemia, mortalitas. In English, prior to the 18th century, the event was called the pestilence, or great pestilence, the plague, or the great death. Whatever it went by, many, many people perished. Subsequent to the pandemic, the first pestilence was applied to distinguish the mid-14th century phenomenon from other infectious diseases and epidemics of plague, because guess what? They happened all the time. The 1347 pandemic plague was not referred to specifically as black in the 14th or 15th centuries in any European language. Most European languages had named the pandemic a variant of the Latin magna mortalitas, the great death. Black death was not used to describe the plague pandemic in English until the mid-18th century. Just to let you know, the term is first attested in 1755. I know, I know, I'm really going, actually, I could go deeper into detail, but I'm sparing you a lot, a lot. Either way, it is the most fatal pandemic recorded in human history, causing the death of 75 to 200 million people in Eurasia and North Africa, and its peak in Europe was from 1347 to 1351. So you're probably asking yourself, or you're asking me, either way, Carissa, what causes the plague? Well, I'm glad that you actually asked. 
I don't know about all of you, but I am super hyped up at this point. I'm not too sure if it's because I had three cups of coffee or because I thrive in October. Like I mentioned in the intro, welcome to the darkness within my mind. The plague was caused by the bacterium Yersinia pestis, which was carried by the fleas of rodents, primarily rats, who were transported between regions through trade or by troops. So, this bacterium was not isolated and identified until 1894, so about 500 years later. And so, the people of the 14th century had no idea as as to the cause of the plague or how to fight against it. So, as I previously mentioned, I started researching the plague. I mean, I've researched the plague long before this, but I really started researching and putting all this together back in July. And one of the things I read was the book written by John Kelly called The Great Mortality. And I highly recommend anyone who is interested to to really actually read The Great Mortality by John Kelly. But to continue with this, uh, John Kelly writes in The Great Mortality that to many Europeans, the pestilence seemed to be the punishment of a wrathful creator. In September 1349, as the disease raced towards London, King Edward III declared that a just God now visits the sons of men and lashes the world. To many others, the only credible explanation for death on such a vast scale was human malfeasance. Evildoers were using poisons to spread the plague. The Great Mortality occasioned the most violent outburst of anti-Semitism in the Middle Ages. And mind you, this period was already marked by violent anti-Semitic outbursts. Unfortunately, many marginalized communities, such as the Jews, lepers, and Romani, suffered and entire communities were completely wiped out. So apart from the plague wiping out in the entire population almost, we had to deal with this, these kind of violent outbursts that were aimed towards marginalized communities. And come to think about it, not much has changed. Food for thought. So as I mentioned, bubonic plague is caused by the bacterium Yersinia pestis, but it may also cause septicemic or mnemonic plagues, and we'll be discussing the different types of plagues and their symptoms in another episode. I also have pictures. I'm not sure why I can sit and look at pictures of plague for hours, and many of you will say, that's because, Carissa, you're gross. That might be true. But I'm not as gross as many of you who have the privilege of indoor plumbing and access to water and still walk around with unwashed hands and asses. I said what I said. We interrupt your regular program with breaking news. Plague enters Europe from the east via Genoese trading ships. Stay tuned for more. Carried by 12 Genoese galleys, plague arrives by ship in Sicily in October. The disease spread rapidly all over the island. Galleys from Caffa reached Genoa and Venice in January, but it was the outbreak in Pisa a few weeks later that was the entry point to northern Italy. Towards the end of January, one of the galleys expelled from Italy arrives in Marseille. From Italy, the disease spreads northwest across Europe, striking France, Spain, Portugal, and England by June, then spread east and north through Germany, Scotland, and Scandinavia. It was introduced into Norway when a ship landed at Ashkoy, then spread to Bjorgvin and Iceland. Finally, it spreads to northwestern Russia. Hide your daddies, hide your husbands, hide your wives, and your babies, as no one is safe. For death spreads its merciless wings to all in its path. Stay tuned for more as we will continue to update you with breaking news. The pandemic originated either in Central Asia or East Asia, but its first definitive appearance was in Crimea, more specifically a town called Kaffa that was under the Genoese in 1347. It is also thought to have possibly been spread along the Silk Road trade routes. The disease had been taking a significant toll in the East since at least 562. 
thought to be a continuation of the plague of Justinian. It quieted down in 749 and flared up again in 1218. Afterwards, it died down again until 1332 and broke out fully in 1346 before traveling to Europe. Dum, dum, dum. That was my bad rendition of a special effect of something going horribly wrong. <laughs> I know I just bombarded you with dates, and this is why a lot of you probably hate history, because it's full of dates. I get it, I get it, but, you know, I just had to tell you possibly the origins of and some dates. So this might be a fun fact, but there is evidence that once it came ashore, the Black Death was in large part spread by fleas, which is a cause of pneumonic plague. And the person-to-person contact via aerosols, which mnemonic plague enables, explaining the very fast inland spread of the epidemic, which was faster than would be expected if the primary vector was rat fleas causing bubonic plague. Like I mentioned before, we're going to get into that in later episodes. The whole point of that part that I just mentioned was that many believe that, yes, of course there was bubonic plague, that was present in Europe, but was it bubonic that spread so quickly, or was it actually pneumonic plague? And this is where there's a great debate about the Great Plague. (laughs) You see what I did there? (laughs) So the Black Death was the second great natural disaster to strike Europe during the late Middle Ages, the first one being the Great Famine, which was from 1315 to 1317. So the plague might have reduced the world population from 475 million to 350 or 375 million in the 14th century. Outbreaks of the plague recurred around the world until the early 19th century. Fun fact, plague still exists today, and I'm not talking about COVID. So the plague was somewhat more uncommon in parts of Europe with less developed trade, including the majority of the Basque country, isolated parts of Belgium and the Netherlands, and isolated alpine villages throughout the continent. According to some epidemiologists, periods of unfavorable weather decimated plague-infected rodent populations and forced their fleas onto alternative hosts, inducing plague outbreaks, which often peaked in the hot, relentless summers of the Mediterranean, as well as during the cool autumn months of the southern Baltic states. Among many other culprits of plague contagiousness, malnutrition also contributed to such an immense loss in European population, since it weakened immune systems. I hope you enjoyed our first episode. Remember to tune in next week for more October Madness, The Curse of Black Death. I'm Carissa Vickis, and this was Beauty Unlocked's October Madness Episodes. (laughs) 